Welcome everyone uh, to this session. We have uh, a, an increasing uh, number of participants already. It's, it's rising and, and going up. Um, we're having, uh, how to say, all things Japanese now in, in, the, in terms of innovation. We're really happy uh, to have Florian Kohlbacher here from um, Coca-Cola Company in Japan. And he will uh, look at the the times before and after the crisis, and what can what can be done on the on the innovation. How how he's lo looking at the situation. I'm really looking forward to have that. Uh, for those of you first timers, um, it's a, it's a, a session where you can put your questions in the Q and A box, and I will monitor that. Uh, if you have chats, then you can use the chat function on the side. Uh, but please only put the, the questions uh, into the Q&A box so it's easier to, to monitor and, and we will make sure we have some, some time at least for questions. But as you know, the recording is available. You can be uh, in touch on the, on the chat and messenger function on the conference app. So there's plenty of opportunities to be in touch should we not have the opportunity to get through all the questions. So for now, once again, welcome all of you in the, in the session, in the meeting. And a very big thank you for, for Florian to be available uh, to give us his insights. Florian, it's up to you. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much uh, for the kind introduction. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Florian Kolbach. I'm the head of strategy for Coca-Cola uh, in Japan. Uh, I'm also uh, leading our stage gate process uh, for launching new innovations in the market. I uh, would like to recognize my colleague, Miyako Tanaka, who's our uh, innovation effectiveness manager uh, who works very closely with me uh, on innovation in Japan. Um, actually, when, uh, when Ian invited me to join the conference, we were uh, kind of joking uh, how things have changed in the past couple of years. I was supposed to give a keynote uh, two years ago at the Fukuoka conference, but unfortunately on a short notice, I had to cancel my trip to Fukuoka because a very urgent business matter came up. At that time, I suggested uh, or asked, could we do this uh, possibly online? I can use technology to dial in from Tokyo, but uh, at, that, at that time, uh, it seemed like a, a very outlandish thing to suggest to have an, an online conference. So, so how things have changed uh, in the past year. So uh, certainly um, uh, COVID has accelerated the digital um, transformation of many things, including ISPIM, I guess. Um, here's what I would like to do um, in this presentation. Um, presenting here from Japan, I just wanna give you a bit of background on, on the situation here in Japan. Um, which I, I believe is quite different from, from any other countries in the world. Uh, talk a little bit about our company here in Japan, because also we are quite different uh, from, from other locations in the world, uh, uh, inside our company, actually. Uh, and then a few thoughts about innovating for the post-COVID-19 new normal. Um, I know in some countries we're still in the midst of the crisis, in other countries we're coming out of it now, or going to come out of it soon. Uh, but I think it's time now also to look ahead and try to imagine uh, what, the, what this new normal uh, post-crisis basically will look like and what kind of innovations we will need uh, for that time period. So uh, let me start by, by, by looking at uh, the, the situation in Japan. And I won't bore you uh, very much with statistics, but this is just looking at uh, the, the, the infection cases in Japan and in international comparison using uh, a compounded daily growth rate. You can see that um, after a spike in, in February in Japan, uh, the curve has actually been quite flattish and actually declining over time. Uh, we, we never had as many cases in, as in many other uh, uh, large countries, uh, comparatively speaking. We were quite lucky, I, I, I would say. Having said that, the country um, declared a, a national state of emergency. Uh, a lot of uh, uh, businesses had to shift to work from home. Um, a lot of restaurants obviously closed and people stayed home, restrained themselves. Um, and so there was a big impact on the economy. Uh, I think Oliver Gassman yesterday also showed this cover of The Economist, the 90% economy. In fact, in Japan, we're talking about the 70% economy, uh, given that to the best estimates that we have, uh, macro demand is basically down to 70% of what it was before the crisis. So quite a strong uh, economic shock to the country, um, similar to the global financial crisis um, of, uh, of 2008, 2009, uh, if, if you compare um, the, uh, the decrease in, in GDP growth. Um, looking at consumers, uh, here's some data from the Japanese government looking at consumer confidence. Uh, you can see that it, it dropped uh, quite significantly uh, below the level of the 2011 triple disaster uh, with the earthquake, tsunami, uh, and the Fukushima uh, disaster. 
uh, as well as what is called in Japan uh, the Lehman crisis, which is, which is the uh, global financial crisis. Um, this month it has started to bounce uh, back a little bit, uh, but still uh, consumer confidence is very depressed in Japan. So huge impact. Um, also for our business, uh, NARTD stands for non-alcohol ready to drink, so which is the bulk of our business, um, obviously with, uh, with uh, soft drinks, uh, but as I will show, we have other, uh, we play in other categories in Japan as well, but we see, did see for the industry a significant uh, degrees which had an impact on our business. Um, but before we talk more about innovation and business, I think one thing is important uh, for, for any kind of crisis. Uh, first and foremost, it's about people, it's about the society. And I think every company has a, a responsibility as a corporate citizen to do something. And we try, uh, obviously, also to do our bit with product donations uh, to healthcare workers who are really at the forefront uh, of this crisis, um, encouraging people who, who stay at home, who are basically in lockdown, uh, to keep healthy, refresh themselves, uh, exercise, encourage them to do that. Uh, and I think you may be familiar uh, with uh, the change in the, uh, in, in, in the logo uh, encouraging people to stay apart as the best way to stay united. But in terms of innovation, uh, we do have a concentrate plant here in Japan. Um, and this concentrate plant um, at the uh, beginning of May started uh, producing um, alcohol for sanitizers, uh, which we also uh, donated to the medical field. So that's a, uh, um, uh, an innovation for us uh, as our, our concentrate plants usually would not produce alcohol. Um, so um, we, they, they figured out a way uh, of doing this, uh, changing the production lines uh, and, and producing these, these uh, alcohol products for hand sanitizers. Um, so that's uh, a, 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 an outcome of uh, trying to you know, make a difference uh, as, 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 as we have as part of our purpose. Now, let me talk a bit about um, Coca-Cola in Japan, uh, where we've been operating since 1957. Uh, first of all, of course, everyone knows our most famous product, I guess. Uh, and just as a reminder, we used to have, and the companies are 134 years old uh, this year, we used to have one product and one package until 1955. Uh, but since then, the world has changed quite dramatically for us. So as of this year, we have 4,300 products globally. And just in Japan, we have more than 800 different products from 50, more than 50 brands uh, in this country. Um, so we have a very unique product portfolio uh, very wide ranging uh, in this country, playing in different categories and sometimes in categories where we actually don't play uh, necessarily uh, in other markets. And I'll come back to this in a moment. Just to give you a bit of a flavor, uh, we launched, for example, in February, just before the crisis, the first ever uh, strawberry flavored uh, Coca-Cola uh, in the market. Um, we, we also launched uh, uh, Fanta Premier Grape um, as an extension of the Fanta brand. Uh, with a very high um, um, juice percentage. Um, we, we play in uh, Yokcha, which is, which is green tea, a uh, very important category in Japan. Uh, we have a mineral water brand in Japan called Irohas, uh, where we launched uh, in March this year, uh, um, uh, a new package, which is 100% uh, RPET, which is recycled uh, uh, PET, so recycled plastic bottles, uh, using 100% of this um, to uh, reduce the, the ecological footprint that we have uh, obviously uh, stemming from plastics used for, for, for packaging here. Um, in terms of innovation in this market, um, there's a lot of things we can talk about, but just to give you a few highlights, uh, on the right-hand side of the slide, you see uh, um, a range of different um, uh, um, products from our Georgia brand, which is our coffee brand in Japan, which essentially created the co category of ready-to-drink coffee or canned coffee and now also pet-bottled coffee uh, in, in this market. That was really a big innovation uh, for people to buy a ready-to-drink coffee uh, and drink it uh, already several decades ago. Um, <clears throat> on the left-hand side, uh, you see four cans in different colors. Uh, this is Lemondo, our Alcopop brand. Yes, you have heard correctly, Japan is the only market in the world where the Coca-Cola company sells an alcoholic beverage. Um, it's a true high product, which is uh, a category that is similar to the hard seltzers we see booming uh, right now, for example, in North America. Uh, we launched this uh, in October last year. So this is very, very new, uh, a product that's doing very well, but it's a big innovation for us to move into a new space, a different category, uh, a field we, ha we haven't played before. Um, some of you may be familiar with Coke Energy, with, and Japan was one of the first markets where it was launched uh, in July last year. Um, I've already talked about the recycled bottle, so let me skip that. Left-hand side, uh, uh, below the alcohol, 
uh, there's a whole range of products in Japan uh, with uh, functional features of, of helping to absorb fat uh, uh, more, more easily uh, or, or actually um, um, to, to help the body not to uh, absorb it into, into body fat. Essentially, the same goes for sugar. So there's a lot of uh, products that help you uh, when you drink it together with the meal, uh, which is uh, for the health and wellness category very important. Uh, we, we introduced uh, vending machines in Japan in the 1960s, and we have almost uh, 1 million of these machines in the Japanese market. A very big, uh, uh, an important channel for us to sell our products. Nowadays, you can connect with your phone through an app called Cocon. Uh, it's completely uh, um, touchless and cashless uh, if you prefer these methods. And also on, on the right-hand side, um, you see our uh, drip coffee maker, which we launched at the end of December last year. So also going into devices here in this market, uh, also a very unique thing. Uh, to do, uh, and obviously you can imagine there's lots of things you can do once you get devices into people's homes. So go on just beyond selling ready to drink uh, products. The vending machines are also very important when we look back uh, at the situation uh, in Japan uh, in 2011, the triple disaster year, where um, because of the, um, the, the, um, uh, the electricity plants going offline, uh, the government requested everyone to save energy. Uh, and there was a big discussion around vending machines and whether they're wasting energy and things like that. So we had to work on this. And uh, two years after the crisis, we launched uh, a new energy uh, saving vending machine that basically also saved the vending machine business. Uh, so there was a, a crisis already a few years ago, uh, which really drove innovation in the particular field for us uh, in this market. Now, let me move on uh, to, the, to the third part here talking about the silver linings, the opportunities, so the innovation for the new normal uh, in a nutshell. Again, uh, you know, as a company, 134 years old, uh, we kind of pride ourselves as, as having an entrepreneurial spirit and, and innovation's been always key, launching new products, going into new categories, uh, uh, et cetera. Um, and, um, you know, just on the right-hand side here to share some, some data with you, uh, in, in last year, for example, uh, the uh, innovation uh, uh, led to incremental gross profit contribution of 23% uh, for the company. So innovation here meaning new products in the market that we launched. Uh, but also, um, it, you know, when we talk about innovation management, it's also about finding out which products, new products don't work and maybe get rid of them or not even launch them in the first place. So uh, out of the many new products we launch every year globally, we killed uh, uh, more than 600 so-called zombies uh, in, in 2019. So um, that's part of, of, of innovation management for the company as well. But let me talk a bit more uh, about some thoughts on innovation um, in, in general, um, without the hat on of, of Coca-Cola, but more as someone uh, working in the innovation field here. Um, I think it's quite well known that um, crises have always inspired innovations. And I won't go into detail here. There's lots of different papers out there. Uh, a lot of people obviously talking about the birth of APD and Uber uh, after the 2008 recession. Now, the big question is what's going to come? Uh, after COVID-19. And again, a lot of this is focusing on digital. We know that, especially in, in recent crises, have pushed really the frontier on, on, on digital, right? Uh, you're thinking also about e-commerce in China, um, uh, after SARS uh, with Taobao, Alipay, uh, Jingdong founded at that time. Uh, in Japan, actually, the, the 2011 earthquake really helped Facebook break through as a social media outlet uh, in, in, in this country. Um, uh, for example, and the running joke, of course, I mean, who's really driving digital transformation? Is it the CEO, the CTO, or is it COVID-19, uh, as, as we famously know? Uh, here's some, some research on consumers from, from McCann, for example, that shows that uh, there's an expectation, actually, on the part of consumers that, um, you know, crisis lead to innovations, that from this crisis right now, there will be innovations. I think this crisis will inspire new innovation. There's 41% uh, of people surveyed in, in, in Japan who agree with this, for example. Uh, above the global average of 39%. So there are expectations um, uh, for this. And again, you know, this is, this is a crisis, but at the same time, it may be also uh, an opportunity. And there's research out there that's showing that if you play it right, you can emerge much stronger uh, from a crisis uh, in the past year. Some research uh, <clears throat> shown, uh, uh, for example, uh, by, by Bain uh, and company. Um, and at the end of the day, uh, for uh, innovation as well as in general. Strategy always makes, means choice. Uh, how do you look at your innovation portfolio? So this, this motto of fewer, bigger, 
bolder, uh, which we embrace uh, uh, as well, for example, or profit from the core, focusing on your core business. But also, and I think Oliver touched on this uh, yesterday a little bit as well, um, is this an opportunity for frugal innovation also in industrialized uh, countries and not just in emerging markets? And what does it mean uh, for us? I think there's just a lot of, of things to think about when we devise our new innovation uh, strategy. And and also, let's face it, uh, a crisis doesn't necessarily always bring something new. It often helps to accelerate existing and emerging trends. But also, a crisis is an opportunity to do what you should have been doing already. For example, to uh, you know, focus resources, uh, kill zombies, as, as, as I talked about before, uh, make sure that, that everything is managed uh, in, in the right way, uh, focus on customer and consumer centricity, right? Uh, really understand what the needs are. What are the frictions? What's the, the kind of job to be done that you want to solve uh, for your customers and consumers? So this should be a no-brainer at any given point in time, but sometimes the crisis gives you the opportunity to think a bit about, more about it and actually finally get it done. Uh, and again, various uh, pieces of research out there that show that this is actually the time to invest in innovation and in R&D. Um, if you keep investing, it will pay off. This is not the time to stop. Uh, and, and, and stop doing innovation or investing money, even though you have to, of course, protect the business and protect budgets uh, at the same time. Now, if you think about the new normal that's going to emerge after this crisis, then there's a lot of research out there. And one thing that kind of um, I found very interesting as a concept is the low-touch economy uh, concept that the Board of Innovation came up with. This new state of our society and economy really changed by COVID-19. Uh, characterized by low-touch interactions, health and safety measures, new human behaviors, including changes in consumer behavior, but also permanent industry shifts uh, that also offer opportunities. And this is something that's going to stick. There's a lot of trends and things we saw during the crisis or still seeing maybe today, but some of this is only happening during the lockdown and afterwards people will change again. But the question is what's going to stick? And this low-touch economy could be kind of the metaphor for the post-COVID-19 uh, new normal potentially. If you look at Japan, uh, a lot of tech companies have already come out or started to develop touchless or low touch innovations, you know, starting from doors that you open by scanning a hand or just using your, your smartphone to select the floor on an elevator, um, gesture voice recognition for, for ordering, uh, projecting a, a virtual menu on, on, on the table when you're in the ret restaurant so you don't have to touch the menu that's touched by so many different people, which increases your, your um, your risk of infection, uh, perhaps, of course, electronic payment, uh, face recognition with wearing a mask um, is, is a challenge uh, for the technology, for example, but it can be done uh, and it has to be done as, as, as you know, the world has changed and now we're wearing face masks much more often, much more regularly, for example. And then the shift to digital um, uh, from, from having a, a kind of a virtually enhanced uh, kind of party while eating at home, through uh, online drinking parties, we probably have all done. I'm, I'm having uh, 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 drinking parties and, and meetings with my team online all the time, joining other people's uh, meetings as well. Airbnb, for example, shifting to online experiences, uh, or Home Sweet Home, for example, uh, offering a hotel-like uh, experience in your home, both with physical uh, products, by delivering, for example, a breakfast or a meal, but we're also virtually uh, enhanced. So again, as I said before, we see this acceleration of digital transformation, but also the pivoting to new business models. Um, one of our competitors, PepsiCo, for example, very quickly moved to launch two D2C uh, websites. One of them is actually already down again. Um, so the question is maybe they moved a little bit too fast, but I don't want to comment too much on, on our competitor here. But the point is really you need to think as a company about your business model, about how, the way you engage with customers and with consumers, obviously, uh, and the retail environment, just thinking about uh, new types of retailers like Amazon Go, uh, uh, for example. Uh, and again, this is connecting to, to, to the low touch economy that I've talked about. And so D2C really is, I think is, is a key word. Uh, and maybe a few years ago, it was still very difficult for us to imagine uh, with certain physical products, um, how we could uh, do this kind of D2C and how we could enhance it with personalization, offering more con convenience. Um, and I kind of call this the, the, the DIY consumption or do-it-yourself consumption, right? Because uh, there's a lot of things the consumer uh, uh, will not have to do. It's not a, a ready-made product and you, you just buy it and it's the same for everyone. This is where the personalization comes in. It's a co-creation essentially with consumers. Here in Japan, there's interesting examples from uh, the cosmetics company Shiseido, for example, the personalized high-tech uh, uh, service they launched last year. So this was, all, of course, already before the crisis. Um, 
meal kits, and for that matter, I guess drink kits uh, uh, will, will play a role here as well. Um, and then, you know, really building ecosystems and new platforms through IoT here, um, offering a more personalized experience. So Panasonic is playing in the subscription coffee business now. And subscription is an interesting, uh, um, uh, obviously, idea also. Uh, for, for, for businesses in the, in, the, in the food and drinks uh, category as we are, for example. So just a few things uh, to, to, to think about here. Um, okay. <clears throat> uh, two more slides before we'll finish and open up for questions. Um, if you think about this uh, more conceptually, I, I talked about strategy means choice and you need to work on the core and focus on the core perhaps first. You want to improve this. This is, I think, where you start. But then you have other options uh, that, that, that range from shifting to new business models, going into new, new, new products and many things, and going after new white spaces. And again, the, the crisis can be an opportunity for discovering new white spaces where you jump in there. And perhaps this framework of the low-touch economy can help you think around what that could be. But there's other frameworks, of course, as well. I've just chosen this one as, as an example uh, from this particular crisis. At the end of the day, I think um, the question we need to ask ourselves is, for this post-COVID future, uh, where will we be? Where do we want to be? And I think we all need to think and strive for emerging stronger from this crisis. At the Coca-Cola Company, uh, we, we often say we've seen many crises over the past 134 years, and we've always managed to emerge stronger from this crisis. But what does that mean? I think that's the question every company, every organization uh, has to, to answer for themselves is how do we define emerging stronger from the crisis? And this is beyond uh, resilience. This means being resilient, protecting the business, but also moving a step further. And the key to this is obviously innovation. Um, on the right-hand side here, uh, I'm showing a picture of a product we, we just launched um, um, earlier this year, very recently, our labelless uh, Ilohas mineral water bottle. Now, what is so special about it? Well, you should have a label attached uh, to your, your bottle. In Japan, uh, for recycling, consumers have to remove the label and throw it away separately from the bottle and from the cap. And that is a bit of a hassle for consumers uh, when they recycle uh, their, their garbage. So to take this away uh, in, in e-commerce, you can do this by case selling because you have uh, uh, legally uh, binding, uh, you have to uh, provide information about the product, which is usually on the label. Uh, but this is a way of making life easier for consumers, reducing plastic, um, and driving e-commerce, essentially. Um, this is just one innovation. Again, it was planned already before the crisis. It fits very well with the new needs emerging uh, um, from this crisis. There's a lot of initiatives we're working on. Unfortunately, of course, I can't tell you right now what kind of new products we're planning, but I hope to have a chance again to speak uh, at one of the future conferences to show you where we are in a year from now, two years from now, uh, with what we have brought to the market, what worked and what didn't work. So just sharing some thoughts here. Thank you very much for listening and I look forward to answering your questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Florian. Uh, also, thanks to leave uh, some ample time for questions that we've gotten already. Uh, a virtual uh, applause from the audience. Um, that's also a, a thing at the moment. Uh, this was great insights. And we do have uh, some questions. I just go through them and, and put them to you and, and you choose uh, one of them was, uh, what are your main sources of innovation uh, when, when trying to find the next big thing? And, and uh, in connection to that, also, what proportion of new product launches succeed and what, what, which ones don't? And then uh, somebody asked, what are the 600 zombies that you killed? You know, some examples of those probably would be interesting to see. Yeah, fantastic. Thanks a lot for, for these great questions. I, I will only be able um, in this forum to answer uh, at a fairly high level, but uh, um, you can uh, obviously uh, find me through LinkedIn or, or, or otherwise, and feel free to reach out to me directly and be happy to have a, a more detailed conversation with everyone who has questions. So sources of innovation, I mean, they, they, they vary. Um, we have a lot of creative people, and I think we pride ourselves in hiring uh, very smart creative people um, for, for the company. Um, so that's definitely one source, but it's certainly not enough, right? So you can even as many creative people you have and great people you have, you also need to understand consumers. So we spend a lot of time uh, and of course money on consumer research, both qualitative and quantitative as well, um, to, 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 to get ideas. Um, and it's often also the co-creation. We, um, we operate as a, as, a, as a system, as a franchise system. So we have our bottling uh, partners, for example, working very closely also on innovation uh, with them. Um, so um, there's all kinds of different sources, both consumer driven uh, as well as kind of uh, marketing or innovation driven ones. Um, 
Another question about the, um, the, 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 the zombies, it, it really vary, uh, varies from um, um, diff all kinds of different things. Sometimes the product itself is not that bad, but it wasn't received so well in the market and you have to make a, a decision about whether you want to keep this because, for example, um, when you execute um, at the customer space, be it in a supermarket, convenience store, etc., there's only so and so much self-shelf space and if it's not selling so well, uh, you might have to pull it, for example or products that don't go on, uh, down so well, or there's maybe too much competition, or cannibalization, frankly speaking, you saw a huge product portfolio as well. Um, so that would require probably another presentation, just focusing on that topic, maybe for next time uh, then. Um, any, oh, there's a yeah. com uh, there was a, coming in. Um, a, yes. There was a cluster on the on the SDGs and how you, uh, you do responsible products and consumption and uh, the other one was on the, you know, which steps you have taken uh, to put that into the, the concept of the innovation process. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, the company launched, uh, I guess, uh, one or two years ago, an initiative called WWW, The World Without Waste, uh, where we focus on, first of all, reducing plastic, uh, focus on recycling uh, plastic, anything that we put out there to try and collect this again. Uh, and we have goals uh, committing to uh, a reduction of plastic. Uh, within uh, the next 10 years, basically. Uh, and at the same time, we're working, of course, on finding alternatives uh, for packages uh, outside of plastic and obviously using recyclable materials as well. Um, so if you go, when you go to our website at the Coca-Cola company, you'll find all the details um, for the KPIs uh, for these efforts. Um, it is very important. It is very important when we, when we think about new, new products. For example, in Japan, we've made a commitment not to uh, develop any new products anymore if the materials are not recyclable. Uh, for example, so there's some uh, some products in the market uh, which have that problem. We're phasing them out, and we will not uh, um, have any of these packages uh, going forward anymore. Mm -hmm. For example, but that's a huge topic for the whole industry, and there's a lot more work to be done. And I think it goes beyond just the individual company. As an industry, we have to. Yeah. Th there's an interesting comment uh, also about the, the what kind of uh, innovations are needed for consumers. And Germany used to have uh, multi-way glass bottles. And there's water inside. So, you know, what do you need the innovation for? So uh, maybe it's also to educate the customer and the consumer in a ways. Yeah, I think that's, that's a great point. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. Uh, you, the, the use of an of a, a innovation playbook to manage your innovation process. I know you mentioned in the beginning, you're also the, the one who, who uh, looks at the stage gate process um, for innovations in Japan. So maybe that's that's an area as well that might be interesting. Yeah, definitely. I think, you know, you, you just mentioned educating consumers. I think, um, you know, as a company, as a system with our bottling partners and so on, um, I mean, I don't want to say educating, but I think studying and learning together uh, about new new things, right? Um, you know, like attending this conference, for example, coming back with new ideas. How do we manage this in a better way? How do we become, we become more effective? and more efficient with our innovation. Um, how do we make sure we focus on the right things? You know, people already mentioned the SDGs, for example, or sustainability uh, and what we want to achieve. So obviously we look very closely at consumer needs, uh, but I think there's more to that um, in terms of you know, taking the whole society into consideration. Mm -hmm. So I think it requires constant learning and improvement. Um, and, uh, and we have this built this into our, our, our culture of starting with version one, uh, evolving to version two, version three. So we always try to upgrade our processes. Uh, and the same is true for the stage gate process as well. In that sense, Japan is, is a great market because they are eager to try something new all the time. I think Japanese customers are really um, want to have some, I mean, look at strawberry Coca-Cola, for example. I don't I, think that's I, I, available I, I, anywhere I, I, else, no? Uh, absolutely. I think we are by far uh, the, the market with the most innovations in the market every year. We're launching 300 plus new products every year. This includes renewal. So uh, maybe has an improved formula or slightly different package. If you think about new, new, really new products, it's more than 100 products every year uh, in Japan for, for Coca-Cola. Um, so it's uh, innovation is key in Japan. Consumers want new things, but customers like convenience stores, for example, are very demanding. They want new things on their shelf um, all the time. So it's an exciting market for innovation, um, mm -hmm. absolutely. Well, we, we, we are basically out of time, but I think we got a, a bunch of questions um, uh, done. The other ones, please use the, the, the chat function afterwards, the messenger function on the, on, the, on the app for the conference, but also of course, get in touch 
as Florian said, LinkedIn and, uh, and other means to do that. Once again, from our side, thanks very much for, for coming on virtual. We, we made it work. <laughs> Not in Fukuoka, yes, but now we, we did. So a big thank you to you, Florian, and uh, enjoy the rest of the conference in case you have time to, to look into some of the other sessions. We, Thank uh, you. And I still hope this stream will come to Japan again, not not just virtually. Thank you. Hey, yeah. Florian. We're, thank you so much. We'll be there in uh, in Osaka in December if uh, if we possibly can make it. So uh, I'll be in touch with you about that. So thank you so much. Great. Thanks, everybody, and enjoy the rest of the conference day, evening, mornings, wherever you are. Thank you.